Hey guys, Carly here, and oh. Tina has joined us on the last couple of days. I've been watching stuff on YouTube and watching the news, and I just felt like God wanted me to make another warning video. If I if I say nothing, I feel like your blood's on my hands. But if if I deliver the warning, you know, it's, it's it's up to you whether you believe it or not, whether you take it or not. But I feel like at least I've been. You know, at least I wasn't neglectful in what God wanted me to do. Amen. And while I was thinking about what God wanted me to talk about, I was praying, saying, God, what do you want me to say? There's so much going on in the world right now. I don't even know where to start. And at that exact moment, God gave me a scripture. And right after that, Tina called me. So, <laughs> so I think that it was God's will that she join us uh, even if she didn't know it at the time, maybe, maybe it was God's will to draw you into this message and, and, and have you uh, add your perspective to it as well. But here's the scripture that God gave me, guys. And, and here's what's been going on, what I've been seeing on the news. All of these these events, you guys have seen it. The the lockdown in the UK, the, the new lockdown, I think it's in Spain, and I think there's one in France. So the pandemic looks like it's it's getting worse. It's, it's firing up again. Um, the political unrest in America has been unreal. You know, I I don't even know where to start, but if you guys watch the news, you know, you, you, you first off, you should watch the news from multiple sources. Don't just watch Fox News. You know, they only give one side of it. Don't just watch CNN. Uh, they only give one side of it. The C CNN is propaganda for the Democrats, and Fox News is propaganda for the Republicans. If you want the real news, you got to watch... 10 or 12 different news sources and the truth is somewhere in between all the propaganda and, and, and all the extremes of all those, those different news sources. I, I, I like the BBC news, uh, but, but anyway, the point is what I've been seeing guys, I mean, this, 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 this country is a powder keg here in America. You know, people are showing up armed for, from both sides at, at the, uh, at the polls at the election, carrying loaded weapons. Um, the police have banned people. Uh, people are stealing ballots from mailboxes. People are setting ballot boxes on fire. People are barricading roads and stopping people from driving, you know, major interstates, both both uh, Trump supporters and Biden supporters. Never have I seen anything like this in my life. And, and the Holy Spirit tells me judgment is coming. Judgment is coming, as well as all these dreamers who posted their dreams on YouTube. You know, judgment is coming to America. Judgment is coming to the West. Judgment is coming to Europe. Judgment is coming to the world. Okay? When Israel became a nation again, the clock started ticking. And I look on YouTube, and what do I see? I see an ocean of false prophets. People that are prophesying, and they're talking peace and safety, and they're saying everything, if, if only your political candidate wins, if only Joe Biden wins, everything's going to be okay. If only Donald Trump wins, everything's going to be okay. As if by the arm of flesh, you could create heaven on earth, or you could create God's kingdom on earth, you know? But God's here to tell us that Joe Biden's not a messiah, and Donald Trump is not a messiah. And if you put your faith in either one of them, you're going to be sorely disappointed. There's only one Messiah who can save, and that's Jesus Christ. If it were possible, through politics, through picking the right leaders and putting them in power, uh, to, to save the soul of man, then why did Jesus have to die on a cross? That's what the Pharisees were doing 2,000 years ago, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducees, the salvation by the law. But what does Galatians tell us in chapter 3? Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Having begun by the Spirit, will you now be saved, be redeemed by the law? No. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. If, if it were not so, then Jesus would not have had to die on the cross. You see what I'm saying? And... And so I'm looking at all these things and I'm, I'm saying, why are all these? And these people, they, they put a title in front of their name. They say, oh, I'm prophet, you know, I'm prophet Joel or I'm prophetess Deborah. They give themselves a title. But when you read the Bible, that's not how prophets were, okay? Prophets didn't give themselves a title. God gave them a title. God picked them. 
and 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 they they were they walked around in humility they they didn't glorify themselves they glorified the god whom they served and they didn't call themselves prophets other people called them prophets because they saw them be used of god and because what they said came to pass and uh let's just i, I want a, a few things about prophets uh, acts chapter 7 verse 52 was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute they even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. See, real, real prophets are hated and despised. Uh, Matthew twenty three thirty, And you say, if we had lived in those days, in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Verse 31. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Okay? I mean... Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors started. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 23. Um, Matthew 5. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now Jesus said this. He, he Right before that he said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and, and falsely say all manner of evil against you. Because that's the exact way they treated God's real prophets. But Jesus said, Woe to you. When everybody speaks well of you, when everybody talks about how great you are, woe to you. Because that's exactly how they treated the false prophets. And uh, Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 36, tells us, Some faced jeers and floggings and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. Okay? So, knowing that, uh, that's a real prophet. That's a real prophet. That's a, that's a real prophet of God, okay? Hated, despised by the world, just like Jesus said. You know, uh, the, if, if we were of the world, Jesus said the world would love us because we would be of it. But but since we are not of this world, Jesus says it hated him, the world's going to hate us too. And, and specifically, I, I, I said all that to set the stage or, or to bring in the scripture specifically that God gave me for this time right before the election. And that is this, Micah chapter 3, okay? And here's here's what it says. Listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, should you not embrace justice? All right, so in verse 1, insert, listen, you leaders of America. Listen, you leaders of the United Kingdom. Listen, you leaders of Germany and France and Spain and any other country in the world. You who hate good and love evil. Okay, that is what we have become as a society. We hate the good and we love the evil. We glorify and we worship and we elevate and we revere those who are ruthless instead of those who are meek and jesus said blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth um we don't do that we we revere the ruthless we revere the cruel we revere the we revere those who are the opposite of meek you know um jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god but we don't do that. We don't revere the pure in heart. We revere the sexually immoral. We revere those who get in front of a camera and display every part of their body and and entice your lusts, you know, and, and they become pop stars and movie stars and and people who make a living, you know, showing the naked their nakedness in front of the camera. You know, those are the people that we that we revere. Um we we should regard and respect the holiness of life, and yet we don't. You know, all over the Western world, you know, abortion is a thing. And and we don't respect the life of even a baby. And and not only a baby, we don't respect the life of the elderly. It's not just the babies that we kill. We, we, we kill children who have been born. You know, all the time in the news, you read these horrible articles and stories of parents killing their own children, neglecting their own children, starving their own children. And and just like Jesus said, you have mother against father and... and uh, our, 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 a daughter against her mother and a son against his father and 
or a daughter against her mother-in-law. And Jesus said that a person's enemies would be the people of their own household. And, and yet we somehow revere and respect and honor what is good. And we despise and hate uh, I mean, uh, what, what is evil. And, and, and we despise and, and hate what is good. Um, boy, I can get my head screwed on right. But <laughs> he says, you tear the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones who eat my people's flesh, strip off their skin, and break their bones in pieces. Now, if that doesn't sound like abortion, I don't know what does. That's exactly what happens when they destroy an embryo. They A lot of times they take forceps and they go into the woman's womb and they break it into pieces. They literally break the bones and, and, and into pieces and pull it out. And that's, that's maybe a more literal interpretation, but also what about spiritually? You know, they, they trample on the children of God. They trample on the, on the meek. They trample on the humble and the kind and the lowly. They, they glorify the arrogant and the prideful, and they trample on the lowly. That's, you know, the, I mean, it's both literal and figurative, I believe, in the scriptures. Who chop them up like meat for the pan, like flesh for the pot, you know? And the image in your mind, somebody using like a, a, a cleaver and chopping up like a piece of chicken or something and chopping up the bones. That's what they do to the children of God. They chew us up and spit us out, you know? It doesn't matter your political party. It doesn't matter if you side with the Republicans or the Democrats. They're, they're two sides of the same coin. It doesn't matter. In, in the UK, you guys have the Labour Party. And what, yeah. what's the other party, the Conservative separatists and democrats that's what you guys call them yeah okay i think it's the same thing two thousand years ago remember when jesus went out in the desert to be tempted of the devil and the devil showed him all the cities and kingdoms and wealth and riches of the world and he said if you bow down and worship me jesus i will give you all this if you just bow down and worship me and jesus said no away from me satan well God had to receive glory from that. And in order for God to receive glory from that, there had to be a real temptation. So Satan wasn't lying. If he would have been lying, Jesus would have known it would have not have been a real temptation and God would not be glorified by it. You know? Instead, in order for God to be glorified, at that time, over 2,000 years ago, that means Satan, Lucifer, literally had possessed, owned, had the ability to give to Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, all the wealth of the world, all the treasure, all the power, all the cities and nations of the world. If that were true 2,000 years ago, how much more do we think it's true today? Now that Lucifer has been cast out of heaven and he's angry and full of wrath for he knows his time is short, this is the time of Antichrist. This is the time... Tribulation and persecution is coming. People have been seeing it all over. That God's real prophets, God's real children who don't seek their own honor, but they seek God's honor, who don't seek money and, and fortunes and don't give themselves titles, but they just allow themselves humbly to be used of God. They have seen it. People of every race and age and gender, they've dreamt dreams and seen visions. The persecution, the tribulation is coming. The rapture is coming, and we've got to get ready. And just because your political party wins, whoever they might be, doesn't mean that you're home safe and everything's going to be okay. The devil would love for us to believe that. The devil would love for us to think, okay, you guys can rest now for another 50 years. You delayed God's word. You delayed God's prophecy because you put this man in power, or you put that man in power. I mean, what a lie from hell. What a lie from the devil. That is the arm of flesh. That is trusting in man, not trusting in God. And it will ultimately end in destruction. It will end in destruction and disaster. Um, it says, Then they will cry out to the Lord, and he will not answer them. At that time he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. Who will cry out to God? These false prophets. These people who have trusted in man instead of trusted in Jesus. They thought Joe Biden was their Messiah. 
and he failed them. They thought Donald Trump was their Messiah, and he failed them. It doesn't matter. They all serve the Antichrist. They all, if they have made it to the top of the dung heap of world power, if they are in politics and they are a president or a prime minister, they have in some way been blessed by Lucifer to be in that position. They have, or if God put them there, he still put them there for his own purposes, not for our purposes. I, I, in, a, in a way, I do believe Trump was ordained to become president, but not the way most people think. Most people think he's going to bring salvation to America. Most people think he's going to make America great again. No, he's not. That's not God's purpose for why he put Trump where, where Trump is. God put Trump in the place of the president to bring judgment on America. All right? And it's, it's not that, you know, the only one who can bring salvation is Jesus Christ. It's not Donald Trump's job to bring America salvation. That was Jesus, and, and Jesus was rejected. Just like, just like Israel, they rejected God as their king, and they told the prophet Samuel, give us a king, we want a king. And Samuel warned them, and he said, if you get a king, you're, gonna, you're not going to like it. He's going to you know, lord it over you. He's going to take your sons and daughters. He's going to tax you. He's going to send you off to war. You're not, you're not going to like it. And, and Samuel was upset about it, but they insisted, give us a king. We want a king. No, we want a king. And, and what did God say to the prophet Samuel? He said, it is not you they have rejected, Samuel. It is me. So by choosing an earthly king, by choosing a king, Saul, they rejected God as their king. And that is exactly what the church in America did. They chose a political leader as their king. They began to preach politics from the pulpit instead of the, the gospel of Jesus and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They began to preach politics. And because of that, they provoked the Lord to jealousy. And, and, and it, it accomplished nothing for the kingdom of God. It was a form of spiritual adultery. You know, people left their first love. I, I say this all the time to my friends, if, you know, and I, I don't mean to offend, but I, it reveals. The Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So if I were to look on your Facebook page and everything you post is about Joe Biden, Democrats, politics, um, Donald Trump, Republicans, politics, but you're not posting scriptures and you're not posting stuff about Jesus and you're not posting, you know, worship. I mean... That tells me where your heart is. You understand what I'm saying? If, you, if everything that you talk about at work with, and with your friends is politics, but yet you're, if, you're, if you won't talk about the gospel, or if somebody can put down Jesus and it doesn't upset you or make you mad, or if they can take God's name in vain or, or do something that insults the character of Christ and it doesn't even bother you, but oh boy, you let them say something against Joe Biden. You let them say something against Donald Trump. And boy, they're, they're, them's are fighting words. You get mad and you want to fight. And, and, and you know, Then that tells me where your heart is. That tells me who you worship. That tells me where your passion is. You don't worship Jesus. You worship Joe Biden. You worship Donald Trump. You worship politics. They have become your idol. And they are all you're concerned about. And those are the things that, that's, what, that's the passion. The passion of your heart is stirred by those things rather than being stirred by God. And it's like, okay, so this, this is what God is talking about, I believe, in, in this verse. This is for America. At that time, you will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. These people who call themselves prophets but are not, they're going to call on the name of the Lord and he won't be there. Because they, they forsook him. It goes on to say, this is what the Lord says, verse 5, is, For the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. Therefore night will come over you without visions and darkness without divination. I like that. So, you know, they proclaim peace if, if, if someone's going to bless them or enrich them you know, with a donation or money. or In other words, they're prophesying, they're saying what, what people's itching ears want to hear. You know, whatever it is. It could be bad or it could be good. But the point is, they're not prophesying the word of the Lord. They're prophesying what they know their audience wants to hear because it will gain them money or more followers or more power. You know, they're, they're basically trying to win friends and influence people. That's their goal. And... Uh, you know, but they prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. 
if anybody comes against them, they want to prophesy, you know, all of a sudden that they prophesy death and doom and gloom because somebody crossed them the wrong way. But again, you can tell they're in it for themselves and their own glory, and they're not in it for God and His glory. You know, they have no problem bringing reproach on the name of the Lord, and they don't ever feel jealously defend the name of the Lord. But boy, you insult them, or you do something to them personally, and do they turn the other cheek? Oh no, they're all about vengeance. You know, and 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 this. I mean, this will let you know who these people really are. They're not real prophets, okay? And our land is full of them. In front of the television, in front of YouTube, and all over, all over the world, these people call themselves prophets, and they're not. They don't have any of the signs of a real prophet. And, uh, um. Okay, verse, verse six. Therefore, night will come over you without visions, and darkness without divination. The sun will set for the prophets, and the day will go dark for them. And that's another thing I see: divination. People. They, they call it prophecy, but they, they use clairvoyance or astrology or a form of witchcraft to counterfeit the gifts of God's spirit. But here's a real prophet will tell you, they'll make a prediction and it will come true 100% every single time. Because if they speak from the, if they speak a word of the Lord and it comes from God, it will come to pass. Deuteronomy tells us the test of a real prophet is if they prophesy and they tell you something that will happen in the future and it doesn't happen and doesn't come to pass, that person is not a prophet and that person is not to be feared, the scripture says. Okay, And you, if you notice it, these people, they can tell you what you did yesterday or they might tell you what you said at, breakfast, at the breakfast table or what you ate for lunch, but they can't predict the future. Or they make a hundred random predictions and they might get lucky and get 10 of them right. Get 10% of them right, you know, and, and they're like, see, look, I said this would happen and it did. Well, okay, but you look back and you see out of 100 predictions, they got 10 right. And and they were just basically watching the news and, 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 and using, the once again, the arm of flesh, logic. They were extrapolating in their head. Well, I see this happening in the news, so this will probably happen or this might happen in the future. But it's not something they're getting from, it's not like a real true word from the Lord, they're just speaking out of their carnal flesh, out of their natural reasoning. And that's why it's like rolling the dice. What they say, it might come true, it might not. You might get 3 out of 10, or you might get 10 out of 100 predictions. Again, that's not a real prophet. Somebody who gives himself the title prophet, or somebody who tells you what you want to hear, or somebody who makes a bunch of random predictions and some of them just happen to come true. That's not a real prophet. A real prophet only speaks when spoken to by the Lord. And when they speak, what they say will happen and come to pass. And that's the test of a true prophet. And we have very few of them right now. You would think looking around YouTube and television, we have thousands of prophets. But that's not so. Because they don't meet the definition of prophet. They're not hated, they're not despised, they're beloved, they're idolized and lifted up on a pedestal. They don't fit the pattern of a real true prophet. And here we are at the time of tribulation and the time of judgment coming upon us. We, we can't afford to be following these people anymore. We can't afford to be believing in, in false prophets. Oh, I know I'm saying a mouthful, but... um. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced. They will cover their faces because there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and Israel his sin. Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Hear uh, her, her leaders judge for a bribe. If that don't describe America, I don't know what does. Her leaders judge for a bribe. That describes America. Does it describe the UK? Yeah. <laughs> the priests, her priests teach for a price. Oh yeah. I mean, we have all these celebrity pastors in America who live in mansions and have yachts and $53 million jet planes, which aren't even good enough for them. They want nicer jet planes. They, they teach 
They don't teach for God. They teach for money. They teach for a price. They teach for a career. They teach to enrich themselves, but they don't teach because they care about the things of God or the souls of men. And the leaders judge for a bribe. They judge for financial reward, not because something's right and they believe in it and they want to divide wrong from right and, and, and falsehood from truth. No, it's all about the money here in America. And her prophets, in verse 11, tell fortunes for money. Oh my gosh, YouTube is full of them. Television's full of them. America's full of them. These fake, false, lying mouths who dare to call themselves prophets of God. Yet they look for the Lord's support and say, Is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. Therefore, for because of you, Zion will be plowed like a field. Insert America, insert the United Kingdom, insert Spain or whatever nation, you, you know, will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble, the Temple Hill a mound overgrown with thickets. Now we know that was written about Israel. We know that was written about, you know, Jerusalem. But remember we, we said before, Scripture is holographic. A lot of times it means more than one time and it means more than one place simultaneously depending on when it's read, when, when it's interpreted. So, you know, God can, a prophet can make a statement that, about Israel or about Jerusalem that happened thousands of years ago and yet it can also correspond to a future event. Just like in the Old Testament, there's prophecies about Babylon that were fulfilled. Babylon was destroyed. All right, Babylon was overthrown and yet there, a lot of those prophecies also talk about new Babylon, the system of Babylon, the system of the beast that we're in. Tina, what are your thoughts on these things? Um, I was just thinking about, like, the, um, I was talking about prophets and that, but there's um, also another thing to be careful of is, um, like, there's a lot of prosperity preachers going about saying that, um, you know, if you follow Jesus, um, you'll be rich, you'll have material possessions and everything. But Jesus didn't actually promise material possessions, but he promised something um, far greater than that. When he says, um, when he talks about we'll be rich, when we follow him, he's talking about like spiritual richness, like um, like that, um, you know, when we go through these things in, in life, that he's um, always going to be there with him, with us. And, um, and his Holy Spirit is, is um, and his love is, is rich and it's always going to be there um, with us. And his love and the Holy Spirit is going to help us get through everything, even like when the persecution comes in the last days and that all we need to do is ask Jesus to help us and, and you know, he'll be there for us and he won't leave us because his spirit will be there. And that's the last thing that he, that's the thing that he promised. He says, when I go away, I'm going to leave another helper um, the Holy Spirit and he's going to come and comfort you and everything and this is what Jesus is talking about Amen We've got an election coming up in two days and either way I think it's bad news for America I read a poll last week they said 43% of people or over 43% of people on both sides the people voting for Joe Biden and the people voting for Donald Trump said that they will not accept it if their candidate loses. And what exactly that means, I can't tell you. But if if you listen to if you listen to some of the dreamers on YouTube that had all these dreams of the post election riots and the craziness that usher in persecution, tribulation, that could mean setting buildings on fire, political unrest, rioting, civil war. At least four of these people separately had dreams or visions of, of China and Russia and the UN coming in because the American government was so broken down and chaotic that they, they couldn't govern anymore. The, the people couldn't be governed. And here's the thing, if you won't govern yourselves, then someone else is going to come in and govern you. If, if Americans can't get along and live at peace with each other, even if they're in different political parties, then we're inviting the world to invade us. We're inviting the world to come in and, 
and, and, and, and as a people, we've lost our honor. You know, if you can't, if you can't control yourselves, if you've lost that much self-control that the United Nations or Russia or China have to come in and, and keep the peace in your nation, then frankly, I would say you don't deserve to have a nation of your own. If you, if you have dishonored yourself and dishonored your freedom that much, then maybe you deserve to lose it. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's, if you can't govern yourself and, and, and exercise restraint and exercise self-control and, and act in a civilized manner, then other people will have to come in and govern you, you know, and that, that's true of a child and that's true of a nation, you know, you ever see a child who's grown up and never had any discipline when they were young? And, and they can't be governed. You can't tell them what to do. They won't listen. Even when they grow up and become an adult, they'll pout, they'll throw a tantrum. They can't deal with reality. And eventually, that child either becomes, you know, eventually somebody else has to govern that child because that child that who then becomes an adult, they won't govern themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like only if they grow up and learn self-control and learn restraint and learn to to be an adult and act like an adult and how to respect other people and how to not be you know not be a burden but sort of pull their own weight in, in society and, and and only if they learn these things can they be truly free and can they then they can be allowed to govern themselves but if they refuse to govern themselves if they constantly infringe on other people's freedoms and rights and if they if they then they're only inviting the government they're only inviting outside people to come in and become their governor you know if you basically it's like this if you won't tell yourself what to do then somebody else is going to tell you what to do so if if you don't want to live that way then you kind of have to become your own boss you have to learn how to have restraint and self-control and and uh but that's the the same is true for a nation right if if a nation can't exercise self-control then i think their dreams may come true i don't think that all these people um i don't think that what they saw was was nothing i think i think that what they saw in their dreams i think it's gonna i think it's gonna come to pass and I think this is the, this whole process has been setting the stage for Antichrist, right? It's like, it's like when you go to watch a play and they close the curtains and you hear them moving couches around and chairs and props and furniture, bang, slam, you know what I'm saying? And the lights are down low, everything's dark. You know that what they're doing is they're setting up the next scene in the play. And eventually when everything's ready, they give the signal and, and curtain and they open the curtains and the spotlights turn on and boom the whole stage has been changed ready for the next scene ready for the main actors to come out into that scene and begin acting and take their place and that is exactly what is going on right now okay what is going on in the world this election this pandemic all the things we see happening around it's setting the stage for antichrist it doesn't matter who wins and it doesn't matter who loses don't be lulled into thinking that you're safe just because your favorite political candidate is in power. Because ultimately they all serve Antichrist. And ultimately this is what's coming down the pipe. Persecution, tribulation. But we're lucky because we also have the promise of the rapture. <laughs> so, you know, I don't, I don't want people to be filled full of false hope. I don't want them to trust in the arm of flesh. I don't want them to think that because their political candidate wins that we've somehow delayed the Antichrist or delayed biblical prophecy because that will not happen. The only way to prepare for what's coming is to draw close to Jesus Christ. You know, there, there is no other way to prepare. What are your thoughts? I know. I agree with you that um, even though um, we just need to sort of like be praying to Jesus and asking him to keep us strong and we need to be reading his Bible and 
we 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 need to be like um spiritually preparing and you know for like Jesus to come and I do believe that Jesus is coming so soon. I'm, I don't want to raise anybody's um like give anybody false hopes and set a date because if I do that then and it doesn't happen that would be just um letting people down and I don't want to do that but what mm. I do know is that I see the signs and um you know like in Matthew 24 and what well, um Carly's just read and that and I do believe that we are at the on the edge of the very last days and I do believe it's going to happen soon. Amen. We could do a whole other video on Matthew 24. Um, take a long time, and I, I try to keep these. We've already gone over 30 minutes, but I'm, I'm trying to keep these videos around 30 minutes because I know they go too long. It's, hard, it's, 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 it's hard to pay attention longer, longer than that. But that, that's a whole other topic for discussion. You know, everything. Jesus said in Matthew 24 has come to pass and that's a topic for another video someday but there's not one thing he said his disciples came to him in Matthew 24 and they said Lord tell us what will be the signs of the end the sign of your coming and Jesus laid out verse by verse in Matthew 24 all these signs and there's not one of them that hasn't already been fulfilled there's literally nothing left to happen for Jesus to return and he was talking about the rapture. He said, there'd be two men working in a field. One would be taken and one left. There'd be two people in a bed. One be taken and one be left. There'd be two women grinding corn or wheat, depending on which version of the scriptures you read. One would be taken and one would be left. He said, behold, I come like a thief in the night. He, he said, keep watch. If you don't know what hour I'm coming. Well, what's he talking about? That's a rapture. You know, that's that whole chapter. That's that deserves a whole video by itself, when we can really just focus on it. But I I wanted to get this out before the election, and I don't know why you called right right as God was showing me that scripture. But I felt like it was God's will that you be a part of it. I know I I, I didn't shut up and I talked through most of the video, but but thank you for adding what God told you to add and and uh, just. Thank your beautiful presence and your beautiful smile. <laughs> it's all, it, it's all um, um, glory to Jesus, really. Uh, you know, so God, Jesus give the glory. Amen. We're almost hitting 40 minutes here, so we've gone a long time. Do you want to close in prayer and just pray specifically what's on my heart, Tina? Ask God if you don't mind, to get people ready to face what's coming in the future. And, yeah, sure. And to help people escape the deception of the enemy. To not be deceived, because he's got all these people believing in, in humans. They believe in the arm of flesh. They believe somehow that a man can save them. And I, I would ask you to pray that God will deliver people from false hope, believing in a man, and give them real hope instead, which is belief in Jesus. And that God will set people free from idol worship, from worshiping a false Messiah. And he will draw people to worship the only real Messiah, Jesus. But whatever I'll the try Lord... And remember, I'll try and remember all that I will do. <laughs> you just pray whatever God puts on your heart, sweetheart. Okay, sure. Dear Heavenly Father, and Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray for everyone tonight, including myself and Carly, Lord Jesus, and for all those listeners out there, Lord, just pray that you draw closer towards you, Lord Jesus, and that we'll always be prepared, and we do not know the exact day or hour, Lord Jesus, but we do know the seasons, and we do know the signs, and we do know that you are um, coming, Lord Jesus, just give us the strength to, even if we have to be persecuted, Lord Jesus, for all of us, just give us the strength, Lord. And may we um, escape from the coming deception, Lord Jesus. I just pray that men's heart will not be deceived, Lord, and that they will not want to follow any other idols, whether it be political or, or anything of the world, like idols or, you know, or anything, Lord Jesus. I just pray that we'll be pure, like pure virgins for you and pure and spot of rights of yours, Lord Jesus, that 
we were not, none of us, none of them would turn away from you, Lord Jesus, but they keep on following after you and that they have a desire to want to walk after you and your truth every day and just drawing closer to you, Jesus. And just pray, Lord Jesus, that nothing will come separate us from you. Thank you that you promised that nothing, that nothing can separate us from your love, not persecution, not hardship, or even any other kind of sin, Jesus. And I just want to thank you for that, Lord. And I just pray that your word will, will be done, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Well, Jesus is coming soon, people. Get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Amen. 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 Get ready to fly, sister. <laughs> get ready to fly. Don't trust in the arm of flesh. Trust in Jesus, please. Prepare Amen. your heart. Prepare your heart. I say this in love. This, wasn't, this is not bad news. It's good news. It's good news if we prepare. It's good news if we... Jesus gave us this time to prepare our hearts. You know? We don't have to sit around and do nothing with this time. We have a little bit of time before everything goes crazy. And before all these these things begin to snowball and, and begin to happen one after the other. Like birth pains coming on a woman in travail. On a pregnant woman. We have a little bit of time to just get ready. Get ready, get ready. Prepare our hearts. Spend time with Jesus. And soon we'll be out of here. <laughs> and when we're heading up to heaven, and we see you, I'm going to run over and I'm going to give you a great big hug. <laughs> I love you, Tina Jensen. God bless you, Ah, <laughs> you're such a child of God. All right, everybody, we love you. See you soon. All the way up, in Jesus' name. <laughs> up, up, up. Up, up, up. Bye.